This is episode 207 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. Welcome to episode 207 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. I've got Cam Griffith back on the show. Cam's a local guy and I wanted to have him back on the show because he and his wife were both forced to make a decision where they left their jobs in the past couple of years due to some of the mandates that were happening and they were thrown full throttle into their business and they're doing some really interesting things with Airbnb arbitrage. So I wanted to bring Cam back on the show to talk about his story, talk about what was going on and how they're growing their business and it really is quite impressive what they've been able to do. So in this episode, we really dug into how the Airbnb arbitrage business works, the markets that Cam is willing to look at, the terms that they look for, and what it takes to get into the different rentals and how they've structured their deals. Cam's taken a creative approach with uh, the various different contracts that he's worked out with sellers, and he's really worked on building out a team so that he can delegate differing responsibilities. Cam is a father of two young children. He, like me, knows the pains and the challenges of having little ones at home and trying to get work work done and having very little time available to dedicate to business. So you really need to find a, a way to be really effective. And Cam is doing just that in his business. It was great to have him back on the show and uh, to see that he's doing so well. Just before we get into the episode, please make sure that you've added yourself to the GTA West REI meetup group on Facebook so that you can get notifications about our monthly meetups in Hamilton, Ontario. If you're in the area and you'd like to join us, we'd love to have you out. A totally free event to come chat, shake hands and hear people's stories. It's always an event that I look forward to and then we would love to see you there. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, notification bell and leave a comment. Let us know what you think of the show. If you're on the audio platforms, you know what to do. Five star rating and review would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. And let's jump into episode 207 with Cam Griffith. Hello and welcome to the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. I've got Cam Griffith on the show again. It's been, I don't know, what, a year? Yeah, almost a year, Andrew. Okay. Yeah. So Cam, I know you've been busy. Uh, you have partnered up with a guy that we mutually know, although I actually just know him through Insta, but I've, I've chatted with him uh, many times and you were one of the guys that, you know, your job was kind of in question, I guess. I, and I don't want, I don't want to say more than you want to say if I don't yeah. Do you not want to get into that? No, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I had a, I had a job, a career, uh, my wife as well, actually. And, um, yeah. just, just current, current climate. Um, as we all know, personal health choices, yeah. I made the decision to just kind of walk away. I was based in the Oakville Hospital. I was a sole yeah. elevator mechanic there. So some pressure was being put on me um, and I was going to get kind of shifted out maybe to Hamilton. They were talking to Fasco. So people were putting pressure yeah. and I guess it was happening to your wife as well. Yeah. And, yeah. and you guys just decided. And, and this is something, I mean, I've spoken out on this many times, like people had the right to make their own choices and it's just absolutely obscene what, what happened. Yeah. And yeah. So, so you were in that pickle and I just think it's so inspiring that like you went out and you said, okay, screw you. I'm going, I'm going to go make it on my own and you're doing it. Yeah. And I just thought, Hey, got to have you back on the show. Appreciate it, <laughs> we got to talk about this. I appreciate it. Well, first off, yeah. I'd like to say it's a humbling experience being here. Uh, and I'd like to thank you for having us because, uh, and you know, I'm representing my whole business here and everyone in the team. Yeah. Uh, really humbling experience. You have really big names on here. And uh, to give us a platform to get our business out there uh, and help us try to uh, benefit real estate yeah. investors and provide win-win relationships. So it's uh, it's humbling to be here. And thank you yeah. very much for giving us the uh, the platform to do so. Yeah, man, appreciate it. I, we met that one time. You mentioned that you were in Burlington. We met up at one of your properties, and and uh, we've kind of just been chatting ever since. Yeah. And uh, it's it's been great. So uh, why don't you just recap? Because last time you were on, I know TJ Herb, you guys have worked together a, yep. a fair bit. You were leasing a building. You and him were kind of working together on, that was sort of where Midlothian Suites started. Yes, yeah. So like yeah. TJ Harb and I, Harb's Plumbing, as you know, got to give him a shout out, huge company yeah. here in Burlington. You've had him on. Can't yeah, he's been episode. on. It's been a while, yeah. We'll get the episode number eventually. Yeah. Put it in the show notes. I listen to your show too much, so I know. Uh, I know yeah, <laughs> somebody just search Andrew Hines, TJ Harb. You'll yeah. find it. Yeah. So uh, TJ Harb, we, we, went, we grew up together and we were kind of the, uh, the kids in high school that just got right into trades, pushed right out of high school. Yeah. Um, got right into the trades. We stayed in town. A lot of people in Burlington went to university. So we teamed up, bought real estate very young, and we were working together. And I essentially property managed everything for him, uh, as well as, you know, put some capital in. He'd put some capital in, it, as you know, his renovation experience, his team and all that. Yeah. He'd provide all the uh, front end yeah. labor. And uh, boy, is he good at that. So we would property manage and we bought a building on Brant Street. Uh, we beat elite developments to it actually okay. um who are just just uh, yeah they, they're the right, right across the street yeah, yeah. uh they purchased a post office on brand street and they didn't 
quite get to this. And I was putting, uh, I was actually going to put the garbage out. It's fate. Uh, it's the guy who puts our garbage out called in sick. I uh, can't make it this morning, so I had to run over. I don't mind getting my hands dirty mm-hmm. once in a while. Uh, I see it as a strength, but it's also, you know, it can hold you back. And I was driving down Brant Street. I saw the f- coming soon sign up on the building and the market's fire hot. Signs aren't even making, making it to the, to the lawns mm-hmm. for the most part. And I called TJ that morning. I said, hey, triplex on Brant. You know, let's have a ticket yeah. boo. And we, we went hard, overpaid, and we ended up getting that. Uh, we burned it. And, essentially, and then sold it, right? Yes, but we burned it. And essentially yeah. I was... Like, you know, he's like, get you we're, we're, we're getting through the renos, get, mm. get the tenants ready, right? Get, get, get these people in here. And I'm, what am I sticking anyone in here for? Uh, it just doesn't make sense. I.e. long-term tenants going through the residential tenancy agreement. And yeah. I, I obviously listen to your podcast, uh, specifically Aaron Bay inspired me. I have no problem saying that, uh, he kind of got the wheels turning. So I said, mm-hmm. this probably make a pretty good Airbnb. And I just ran with it. Uh, I told TJ, Hey man, I'm just going to rent this building. He was all for that. And we just kept the ball turning. Um, it's done very well for us. Uh, we we grounded ourselves. We you know put the systems in, systems into place and mm-hmm. put a little bit of sweat equity into kind of learn those systems ourselves, which was great. Mm-hmm. And we got the triplex up and running. Converted one of our other buy and holds that I also own yeah. PJ Harb uh, over. And here we are. We're at 17 units. Uh, managed 10, right now. Yeah, uh, not like arbitrage four managed, and we have 10 coming up in the next few months. Four months. And we're looking to keep growing. So 17 are arbitraged. Uh, 14 are arbitraged. So 13 are arbitraged, four are managed. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, wow. yeah, so that's been within the year. And I can say a yeah. uh, big uh, reason we've hit that growth is uh, our partners, Jay and Miho Ravel in Yokosuka, Japan. Um, what he's brought to us in kind of turning us more into a business operating yeah. like we should be. Um, one thing Jay really brought to us and he, he said, uh, you know, the lifeblood of our business is data, it's money, it's data, it's knowing where we're going. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that, that data and reviewing it every month is, is our blood test. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's so money or numbers driven and it yeah. really instills confidence when you're ready to move forward and the deals are there, but you don't have the time to look at the numbers cause you're so caught up in the grind. Yeah. He's really just, uh, just propelled us. It's incredible how someone halfway yeah. across the world yeah and play off each other's strengths so jay jay's in japan yes and uh I, he messaged me a, a long while back and we chatted on the phone one time and and he uh yeah he wanted to get into investing here but he's from here originally but he he wants to obviously he has a family in japan yep. staying there uh but doesn't didn't like the prospects of investing in japanese real estate wanted to be able to invest back here yeah and uh somehow you two found each other (laughs) yeah and i'm gonna say strictly because of uh maybe you you could say my big mouth or uh just being uh, public with my views um and some people would say that would kind of lose you business ironically it's uh yeah it's pushed away people we maybe not want to work with and uh, attracted uh, others that are yeah similar mindset very uh, and that's a very tricky one because i yeah I, I totally get where you're coming from there because obviously i ran my mouth a ton from the very first day of the very first lockdown saying that this is all insane and um you know i think we all have personal growth in that that area because i obviously had positions on things where i learned over time okay well you know there is nuance here and um but uh you know I, I adamantly disagree with the way everything was handled and uh as you know and uh mm-hmm. more reason i've toned that down lately is um i i, I evaluate things from a you know does it is it going to help yep, yep. and it, i lately i just haven't haven't really found a way to help so we're, right now i'm just really focusing on hey what can we do to create uh create true independence like or interdependence yes. where you can be connected with uh, people in your community, you you have real estate that supports you. Uh, you buy real estate in a way that you know you know builds your your family's wealth and and things like that. So trying trying to steer the ship that way, but it's great to hear that you know you share your views, and I think my audience appreciates this too. When I share my views on things, um, you yeah you attract the ones you want, you repel the ones that that don't don't align, and and why should they be around anyway? If they if they don't align with uh, with you know your way of thinking, it may it's probably not a right fit. Especially going to cause, uh, yeah. Especially going to cause something to go against the grain. So, 
I'd like to say kudos to you, yeah. Andrew, when you see Because you came on, right? You came on. Yeah, yeah. Jay probably saw you on the podcast or connected maybe something. Yeah, from I that think, I, Andrew, that's a big reason yeah. why. And uh, I told you I was coming on today and yeah. um, it's it's come full, full circle. Yeah, that is how he saw me. I love hearing those, those stories because how many people have seen an episode of this podcast and done something big and then eventually been on this podcast talking about how they saw something on this podcast and it started things. I can single-handedly put it down to you. So, uh, and also kudos cool, to man. you when you see people in the uh, real estate investment uh, space and we, we look up to you um, and you see them this episode is brought to you by controlling compound financial they teach real estate investors how to multiply their wealth using infinite banking strategies for a complimentary wealth coaching session or to learn more visit www.controlandcompound.com forward slash andrew hines are you interested in getting started in investing in the united states but not sure where to start why not attend the Investing in the U.S. Mastermind hosted by myself and Nick Van Dyke on March 4th, 2023? Nick and I will be covering topics ranging from A to Z, new construction, multifamily development, Airbnb, and much, much more, as well as the basics, including opening a bank account and understanding the proper corporate structure. We'll have several keynote speakers touching on very specific topics. And most importantly, you'll be sitting in a room with people who are highly focused and highly committed to investing in the United States. For more information, visit investinginthus.com and send me a DM on Instagram for a special discount code. I'll look forward to seeing you at the event. Uh, you know, saying their views and being a leader, because that's what I would call it, being a leader, inspires other people to lead. And uh, that's what I saw in you. And I've seen in many other people, especially in my network. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just, uh, it goes a long way. So kudos to yeah. you. And it's it's kind of reaffirm that I should, if I feel that I'm making impact with what I'm posting yeah. or saying or, or making public that, uh, I should say it. And, yeah. um, anytime I've kind of zippered my mouth shut, it's uh, never kind of worked out. It ends up being painful eventually anyways. Well, I mean, like, look what happened, you know, your, your job obviously got pinched and, and you had to make a decision. And I think a lot of people, I, I got this a lot from people where I would say, Hey, you know, this is my position. What do you think? They're like, well, yeah, this is how I feel, but I could never say that like you do. Yeah. because you know my employer you know or because yeah. i have a job and i'm not discounting that because i know that pressure on people they people have kids and they rely on that income and that's why i think the proper solution is is to learn from what we just went through and understand that your job is a, is a huge risk exposure yes being employed is like having one source of income yeah. like no investor does that like you know what people talk about multiple streams of income your income you know a job could be one source but there should be you know how many more sources what i find ironic yeah. uh with the socialist environment i was in i was in a union mm -hmm. and but what the union taught me a lot of kind of the old school union minds is uh we, they lay a lot of guys off at christmas right and a lot of the guys are related to mm -hmm. people so they're laying your little brother off on boxing day or sorry on christmas eve right right before the holidays mm -hmm. for a few months and they would always reiterate the older heads to you you know you're just a number to these guys you're just mm -hmm. a number Funny when things peeled over, they didn't kind of apply that to the scenario of it just being a number. They all just kind of followed, followed the line. And I was yeah. looking at from from hearing those older heads all those years, realizing that this job is there's no security. I'm just a number and they can yeah. just shift me out of this hospital. And I've been giving them my all and some for the past two right. years. And it really funny that that environment mm -hmm. taught me that. And it kind of solidified in my mind that uh, I, I don't have a choice. Yeah. Um, I may think I'm safe by shifting off, but yeah, you're not. You're not. At the end of the day, every single source of dependency is a risk, Yes. right? So a job is a source of dependency if you need the income from it. Yep. I mean, you could love your job. You know, there's there's some people out there that don't need the job and they just work because they like it. Yep. Hey, that's a great, I think that's a great reason to work. And uh, if that's not the case, I think that, you know, so many of the listeners, listeners of this podcast, like that's why they're listening to this. They're trying to, you know, let's let's add in X number of rental properties. Let's let's build cash flow. Let's, you know, and so many, you know, how many quit their jobs mm -hmm. in the last, you know, several years. So uh, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here. Like I think that a lot of it was just the guests that we had on. Um, you know, I think the one thing that I I bring to the table is I'm I'm just interested in the different stories. Yeah, and uh, I just ask the questions I'm interested in, which works that's, well. That's why your podcast has so much traction. I truly believe. Yeah, right. Because I'm not, I'm not faking the interest. I'm interested, um, and I was interested in what you'd done because, like, that's a hard position. Plus, you were just talking before we got on this this uh, podcast about how you've got a little one. Yep, two, <laughs> how, two, two little ones, right? Yeah, you've got in an eight month old. Yep. So we both know what it's like to try and get work done, working from home with kids are kids running around. Yeah, um, yep. And the noise, and you know, making phone calls and stuff. The lack, lack there of work. <laughs> lack of work, you know, being able to work part time at best and having to be so productive in that time, yeah. like um, having to 
to de- delegate? I'm sure you're you're real, you're not cutting the grass at your properties anymore. No, no, no I'm <laughs> definitely not. No, I've grown out of that. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I remember you brought yeah. that story up last time. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, that was one of the turning points. Yeah. And uh, it, it takes you a long way, delegation. Smallest things, smallest yeah. tasks. And uh, those are the voices you hear on your podcast. Right. And it really makes you kind of think bigger. So how many hours of, of deep work do you get in a week? In a week, so I'd say about four hours a day. So obviously, that's that's what you can get. Twenty eight, let's say, but it'll yeah. vary, right? Like yeah. it, it's it's going to vary. I wouldn't say that's all deep work, right? That's just work, work. Yeah, uh, you're yeah. getting to work. Yes, yeah. And uh, so you know, deep strategic work, uninterrupted work. Are you getting that too? A little bit. I'm lucky enough to have my neighbor owns a company called uh, Cobalt Safety. So he's got a at home office and he steps out a lot. So you so just go over there. I just walk over to his house, and his wife comes over to mine. And, uh, we kind of we, we that's swap super, positions. That's super needed. Yeah, yeah. I, I um, that's a big reason why I rented this office space. As I was telling you, is uh, just getting out of the house felt so necessary. Yes. Yeah, just just to you know get rid of the noise a little bit. And um, but yeah, I've I've had that same that same limitation where I think I'm you know somewhere in that ballpark, four hours a day or whatever, twenty some odd hours a week. Um, and then I have the miscellaneous stuff, like returning emails and stuff here and there, but yeah. drastically reduced. So I'm sure many can relate to time restriction. How are you finding that you're able to grow your business and still spend that time with your family, only working really part time, and then the rest of the time, you know, being with your family? How uh, are you able to balance that? How what techniques, if you've delegated? How have you delegated? Well, first I would say your team, right? Um, I'm a really sports oriented guy and I've always kind of built everything off of a team environment. Played sports growing up, um, very like, competitive sports. Me and TJ played together as well, soccer our whole lives. So when I look at anything and I look at real estate, I kind of look at it as a team and just just implementing the right, the right players mm-hmm. in the team, right? People that complement each other's strengths. So seeing what Jay brought mm-hmm. and then Jay bringing on the bigger mindset of uh, virtual assistants, accountants, bookkeepers, Really? So you got the team set up yeah, with that. I got the team yeah. set up. I have a cleaning manager who's my sister. She is mm-hmm. like beyond belief. Um, you know, stalking the cleaners, uh, hiding things. Nice. Uh, she's phenomenal in that sense. We got a launch team building right now. Uh, my my good friend Taylor, who's working for us, he also worked in the elevator trade. Uh, had to walk from his position as well. Okay. Licensed HVAC mechanic, licensed elevator mechanic, not viable to work. Yeah, uh, it's it's pretty crazy. What a great hiring opportunity all that was. All these people who lost their job, good people who who can critically think just being laid off and or, or fired for a very bad reason. Yeah, that's a huge opportunity. And you've, you've taken build advantage of it. Yeah. That's right. So we, we've started by building that team to kind of take the off like the work off like off our plate and then uh, finding your lanes. What are your jobs? What are your roles in those lanes? And we strictly stick to those roles mm-hmm. and no one bumps into each other's lane. Everyone's allowed to kind of give input. But, but no one, you know, the people on those lanes and those tasks, they make the sole decisions. So things just tend to get done because no one's kind of hawking over each other. Mm-hmm. It's been a lot of growth. You know, Summer, my wife, she's never owned a business before. I'm new to this whole space. So yeah. you've got the whole uh, small mindset, right? Giving this little away, but you don't realize what you're missing. Uh, the, all the little pieces of pies you're, you're missing to, to, you know, to get when you give a little bit of away, when you're willing to spread it out a little bit, what comes with that. Yeah, and you're saying by, yeah, you hire, it does cost you, but it brings back yes, more. Yeah, so yeah. we're I'm seeing the benefits of that now. And um, what we're really trying to do now is just provide win-win as much. So try to provide, rela- like bring relationships in where it's not as hard for us. Um, mm-hmm. I either some landlords that just want to kind of give you your properties and we'll just take care of the property management instead of chasing properties where you got to take care of all these extra things, which IE is more work, right? So like, you got the property management, lawn maintenance, snow removal, where the landlord's like, we're just kind of waiting for the right people, the right relationships where they'll give us a better product for a, a good price and with less less work. Um, they, they just want that uh, stability of not having a tenant. And, uh, you know, if I want to vacate this place yeah. and sell it in a few years from now, like that is a great feeling so, in their heart, uh, knowing that, yeah, I got to pay for lawn maintenance, lose here, but I can sell my property vacant if I need to. We'll pull our stuff out. That ag- so you make that agreement with them. You know, if you want to sell, you can kick us out anytime. Yeah, like in, yeah. we get our one year. You need your one year to pay back your investment. Right, Six but you, you tell them because they can't even enforce that. You're under residential tenancy. One hundred percent. But also, Wait, you just give them your word. And this is for any investors yeah. listening. We, you have our word. We're looking to get your next property that you buy. 
Yeah. Uh, people we're working with, they don't own yeah, one property. Yeah, and if you're a credible own. business, like they'll believe you, right? Yeah. Like, say, hey, what's our motivation? Like, we're we're not just gonna we're not just gonna stay here if you don't want us. Like, we have a we have a business, we have Google reviews. Yes. you know, like, yeah. do you have Google reviews? Uh, we're not. We don't have Google reviews. I'm pretty sure Jay's <laughs> We've got on Airbnb that. reviews. I'm pretty sure Jay's on that. We just hit 100, yeah. which is really big for us. It was a big uh, oh, threshold nice. for us. Um, but just trying to look at the big picture. We yeah. know this isn't going to be your last property. We know you have a portfolio. And this is what I, I think we had this conversation. It's all about how you, how you sell. If you get people face to face and they see you're a real, a real human being and like you have, you know, you have a vision and you, you know, you're a straight shooter. I think they just respond to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. The yeah. people that respond to it are, um, the, like the more educated they are, the more they understand it, the more they've been in the space, the more they understand it. Um, I lost, like literally lost a uh, joint venture partnership. I'm not too sure if it's because of my opinion or our business model, but, or the kind of the climate, but the tenant left back for Ukraine before the the, the uh, war broke out. And um, I just said to my joint venture partners, I was managing everything, like completely passive. They had no problem with me doing everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I was fine until I said, you know, I'll just rent the building, the the, the home. And uh, well, you can't do that. Well, like it's Airbnb, professional executive rentals. We know riffraff. We have things to mitigate that noise, noise monitors, uh, yeah. closed bookings, not open bookings and stuff. Okay, so you're like, with the Airbnb. We're out, yeah. we're out. But they felt comfortable yeah. having a tenant in there that could have. Fair enough. Yeah. Like, you know, so hey, it's not for everyone. That's, and that's no, okay. no. But it's what yeah. I'm finding is yeah. a lot of people that are kind of more vested in the space understand yeah. it more and understand how it's less risk and uh, yeah. really more benefit and more control. When you're dealing with professional yeah i i think professionalism goes so far with a lot of these landlords especially a lot of the ones that don't have a, a lot of properties yep. it's just they just have a couple they don't have great systems and their properties really are a pain in the butt to them you can be such a problem solver so with that in mind how do you initiate the conversations are you doing it or is is jay doing it like i've been the soul the face of that um yeah. i like to think of pretty like street street level so i'm good at speaking yeah. to people on a on a street level um yeah, giving okay. them the real the real bones um okay. and we dealt with so at the beginning i i would push it a lot of people and i found ever since i've just let things go organically the the, the good people come to you and like, don't press it on people. Like, you you, you got to get your offers out there. You got to be we're constantly we're, we're constantly. So you building have people up. coming to you now. Yes, they're yeah. saying we want we want just rent out our place. Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's happening more now. Like that's taken a that's taken a bit, right? Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not chasing as much anymore because I was finding I was wasting a lot of time chasing, mm -hmm. where we we're just really diving in our focus. We're trying to build out our property management side. Uh, we, we build out our systems more and then the phone call comes in and we're, we don't even got to go look for our next arbitrage. It's just landed in our lap. What geographic regions are you okay with? Because you're Burlington. Yeah. Just for every, anyone who's watching, you don't know. Uh, so you live here in Bur Burlington, like Aldershot area, I yep. think. Yep. Um, obviously very easy to manage locally, but I mean, if you have team, you can expand. Yep. Yep. We are, we are in Barrie right now. We were in Chatham, Kent. We might go back there this summer. We were working with a doctor out there that travels a lot. So we, we took his place for like five months. It was a pretty, pretty cool spot for a summer, summer rental. How do you make a, a deal work for five it months? Was, it was like fully furnished. So he it, had it. He's custom just like, home. You can just take my place and manage yeah. it for five yeah, months. Like, I think it's up for sale right now for like 2.7. So it's like a custom home. Okay. Furnished, so you just turnkey. went down, took some pictures of his place. So you yeah. already had this relationship. He had, he had the pictures up. So we're like, you know what? We're not even going to invest money in So pictures. he just gave you his pictures. Yeah. So you guys just needed to find a cleaner down there. Yep. Cleaner, which he had. Somebody he, who's a handyman. Yeah, he owned like... So he, you literally used his team. Yeah. He, he owned everything and yeah. they were looking at the space and his wife had just the, uh, yeah. I think the cloud overhead where she didn't want to do the management side of it. She, she, everything in... So they were cool with the Airbnb thing. Yeah. And, they and what deal manage. did they work out with you? You just, you which gave them paid a we just flat. paid him rent. And I said, like, we ain't going to be here when you come back. What's what's the flat rent you gave him? Uh, it was 4500 I think. And they paid the utilities? Yes. So they you, they didn't even take the utilities out of their name. So 4500 a month. And then what were you guys able to... That's Chatham? Yes. 4500 in Chatham is yeah, a big place. It, it, it was, but it's a custom rental house. And I think he gave us three bookings that were like 3000 each. So he, he sent them he, your way? Like private bookings. So here, here uh, are some. He already had people lined up. He tried it before. He had listed yeah. it before. They just weren't comfortable yeah. with the whole management piece. And then you're going away to enjoy time with your family in the yeah, U.S. Yeah, they didn't want to worry about it. That's you, you, that's exactly Okay, it. so what were you guys able to bring in for those five months on that place? I think we made about 30% return, 20%, 30% return on what we invested. 
what did you have to invest? Are you just saying like just, your rent? Just, yeah, yeah, on, on top of the rent. So it was uh, it was a pretty handsome so short term. Let's simplify that. So if you're making forty five hundred a month, were you or you're paying forty five hundred a month? Were you were you grossing like six thousand on no, average? No, no, no. It was, it was about we're gonna say four. I think three to four. Three to four uh, thousand of profit per month. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, apologies. That's great. So, I mean, your investment was nothing. Like, I, I wouldn't call that an investment because you didn't. Like, that's just paying rent. Like, yes. You're, well, you're paying it monthly. You're making money monthly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You got to make sure yeah. you get it returned, though. So you do. You do have to get it back. <laughs> yes, that's the thing. Yeah. Then you're just so negative operations. It's all. You know. It's all good once yeah. you started profiting, yeah. but until you hit that number, you you, you have to get. The that thing back. I love about this is they probably left their internet. They left everything. 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 How did you have this contact? Do you want to, I told you about my neighbor who owns Cobalt Safety. They yeah. invite us down to Chatham one day to their cottage. We took our daughter down and there's a little coffee shop. I'll give him a shout out. It's called Charlie's Coffee Shop in uh, Blenheim. And I was in there and he goes, listen, uh, the owner over there, that's the owner of this coffee shop. He owns, it's a chiropractic center. It's called Life by Design, mm -hmm. chiropractor, gym, all that. He goes, that's the owner. He was talking to me about Airbnb. I put him in your ear. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go over and talk to him? So I went and ordered my coffee, walked over him. He He's said, working hey, this in a shop. What I do, yeah. And I said, hey, this is what I do. He said, why don't you drive over to my spot tonight? Drove over to the spot, met his wife. Yeah. Actually showed him your podcast, which gave me great credibility. Oh, yeah. And oh, showing you, yeah, you yeah, on the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I just said, yeah. you want to find more about us. We have a podcast. You could listen to us. Yeah. And they, I think they did their due diligence. And uh, we were there the next week buying linens, turning it over. That's and awesome. It was within, within a week and a half. He was like ready to leave. And um organically happened and yeah. that's the things we're trying to chase now things yeah. where it's organic we don't want to put in all this you extra work over here organic. when when we know and you'll get to that critical mass where you just like you're you're not even out, outwardly looking for business at all yeah it'll, yeah. it'll all be uh just coming to you well i think we're seeing now how crucial yeah. the systems are yeah and there's no point even working if you're working silly so why not build our systems? Why not build out property management, which doesn't cost us anything, where we can still provide so much value so to you investors. guys? You guys still are the management centrally, but you're, who are your boots on the ground? Like, I guess Chatham's not a great example because that guy had all the contacts, but Correct. now you can use those contacts for other places. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So now you now you're set up there. So we've looked in Chatham, but it's not like the friendliest market. Obviously, it was a unique. That was kind of a unicorn, right? That's a, it's a weird market to do that in, but and that's where this conversation is naturally going to go is how you're picking markets in this environment, but. And and with all the bylaws changing, yeah. Chatham's obviously not going to be first to the table with with restricting Airbnbs. You know, it happens in a place like Toronto first. It could take years before that reaches the smaller markets. When it goes to bylaws, I'll say I'm not one for following rules. So <laughs> I just I think I said in your last like just beg for forgiveness. Don't ask for permission. Oh, yeah, there's a certain degree of that. Like do and I'll, I'll very firmly agree that, you know, you you push push the envelope uh, to a degree that you're comfortable with knowing if something were to happen that you can handle it. Absolutely correct. Yeah. So what's nice is we know if we're building out our, we're building out our team, we're building out our kind of network, we're always going to have somewhere else to move that furniture. Right. So if you get, if you get shut down, you write your lease in a way that, or do you just talk it through with these guys? I just talk it through. See, I, I like that so much better. I do not like relying on a contract. Of course, I'm not saying don't have one. Uh, that's not advice. Have a contract. But for me, the handshake and the agreement is so much more important. Those are what are we agreeing with. on here? Those are the people we're working with. Yeah. And uh, we don't want to kind of work with anyone else. It's just, yeah. we, we, and we've learned that just off a couple. Uh, just doing a couple with people and maybe they don't understand it or then they're being control freaks or they want to know too much. And when you just have people that know how much value you're bringing them, they know the pain of property management. Yeah. They know their 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 profits. You know that property management yeah. can eat into your profits. So what's the shortest you would do um, an Airbnb agreement on a property? Absolutely one year now. Now The okay. Chatham was like a complete unicorn. We were growing. Yeah. And it was, he's like, I've already got three off market yeah. bookings that would essentially mm -hmm. break us even. I'm like, well, if we put this up midsummer. Uh, it'll it'll get a few bookings to turn as that profit, which it yeah, that and that's just going to be what people who are for some reason traveling to Chatham, visiting family or whatever. Yeah, it was it was funny. Two American families came up, and it yeah. was on the water, but had no water access, so it wasn't like you know you had the hot tub, the pool, the the, the, well, the gym, handy. yeah, the outdoor like workout gym. That as sounds well. amazing, actually. I, I would probably want to visit. Yeah, that yeah, as the a sauna, and it was a unique home too. Yeah, but to be truthful, like I don't know who who would. Go out there and i was but it was happening it, but it was happening so and you we, guys weren't asking them speaking to them like i guess you were not really directly interacting with your guests anyway right? yeah a little bit and we did look up obviously comps listing yeah. comps other short-term rental comps so we use mm -hmm. a little bit of air dna it only provides you so much value air dna right um yeah. so we we, we we did our due diligence this can work we we have faith we can get one two three bookings on top of what yeah. he's providing and that happens so we're not afraid to go back if he ever needs our hand we'll definitely meet him at the table and see if there's a middle ground to be found 
what I would say on top of that is I think you spoke about and touched on where else we kind of want to expand to or where we're willing to work. Definitely places where we can scale. Um, yeah. My mind's grown from that, willing to kind of go and jump around all these random places, cottage, country. Okay, well, yeah. even if I go up to Muskoka, right? How many places am I going to get in Muskoka? Like, I'm sure the one would just yeah. turn an insane profit, but can we actually scale there to like a large degree? We're really trying to yeah. scale and our model is is not a, I think everyone knows there's two types of Airbnbs. There's the kind of unique experience Airbnb, which Carmen brings. Mm-hmm. Everyone looks up to her and if they don't, they're, they're, they're just daft. Yeah. So unique experience Airbnbs that are really, really unique and they charge a premium dollar. And then there's that um, base model yeah. uh, hotel essential service that we're providing. And that's what we provide. Oh, so, so you're doing super basic. Yeah, super well, basic. Ex- with the exception of the super Chatham clean. one. Yeah, super clean, super basic. And I have to give full credit to my wife. When we did Brant Street, I wanted to kind of get the in on Brant sign going on the side and, and really make it that unique experience. Yeah. And she's like, Cam, like, it's nice. It's Brant Street, but it's there's no outdoor patio. There's there, there. Yeah, you can still make it quaint. For sure. Yeah. And she said, I think we were best sticking with this hotel model. And uh, we mm. ran with it. And we won't we won't expand outside of that until we really dialed yeah this down okay so so give me an example this that one's no longer in your portfolio you don't know it is it still is, is? Okay. uh elite developments own it i'm their tenant okay yeah uh, so uh, i've been working with sam so you beat them out on the buy yeah <laughs> beat them out on the buy they, they bought us out and it's been a win-win for everyone yeah. they're they're gonna they're gonna make their build uh that's interesting hopefully not soon <laughs> yeah so so they're they're looking to tear down the building around it and that building and build out something yes i think they bought yeah. ours 688 yeah. brant which yeah. is a biplex and then the post office as well so i think they they offered us actually yeah. when they bought us like a couple of units um i don't yeah. know the size of the building i mm-hmm. believe it's actually uh it's in city hall now they've they've, they've put okay. forward the proposal i would love to get sam on this show um from what i hear he uh he doesn't do the, take those kind of requests, but uh, mention it to him because uh, I, I would just I would just sit here and listen for an hour. One hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, he uh, so for anyone wondering, he he does. Uh, he'll he'll find um, developable developable land and develop medical plazas where he can combine doctors and walk in yeah. clinics. And yeah. uh, from what I hear, that's a that's a great business. Very savvy businessman. I Very don't know. Savvy. I met him the one time in the meeting. Don't know a ton about him, but I know. Yeah, I've met him a couple of times, but yeah, it's just incredible passing. what they do. And you yeah. see their portfolio. I think they have a lot of money from the Middle East coming over. And they're there. They move it's, fast and large. Yeah. One thing which was cool, and it kind of made me realize the power of this model. When you're talking to a developer and you can't believe you're sitting in the developer's office and they're buying the property off you six months later after you've purchased it, right? You're not even done the reno. Um, and they're saying, I, I propose them, listen, I have a short term rental business. I'm going to stay as a tenant if that's okay. And he looks at me, we usually board the windows up. These, these tenants cost us 50 grand to try to build. Like we're trying to build. They know we're developers. Yeah. They won't go anywhere unless we cut them you, a check. And you, they would have to trust you. Anyone calls them, anyone messages them on, uh, you know, an uh, Insta DM or, a, or an email, even a phone call, they're probably going to dismiss. But if you're in a conversation with them and you say, hey, I'm a real person, I'm here and this is what I do. And, oh, by the way, here's my website. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's my, uh, you know, my uh, Airbnb page. Look, we're super hosts. Yeah. Like they're, gonna see oh you're a professional okay yeah, yeah i'll talk to you and and i'm yeah. thinking well he's got more units so we haven't <laughs> yeah oh he has oh, probably yeah. a lot of units I, sp- I speak to his property manager samir i haven't yeah. uh I've, I've tried to get in there uh you should after that's just right next door you should go over there and just say hi <laughs> no, no doubt no doubt yeah absolutely yeah. so uh trying to trying to obviously go deeper with him one day yeah but with trust right so, yeah like it's all trust like i think a lot of people are gonna they, they probably have the idea to do an arbitrage business but they they think it's something that they could just do as a side thing but i think that you have to treat the business as a serious business because if you don't develop the credibility you'll never go anywhere with I it i think that's i've owned a home since i was 20. so i think owning homes since I was 20, cutting my lawn since I was 20, just yeah. just knowing what it takes to own a home. Yeah. Um, when I can speak to someone, like you can BS your way through something, but yeah, you know when someone's kind of real and I truly believe like I have an advantage in a lot of my competition because uh, I've owned a home, I've been a homeowner. I know what a homeowner is looking for. I know that yeah. if you have a beautiful home in Burlington, you yeah. want it, like you, you invest in Burlington not for cash flow. Like you don't, you're, you're not, they, they, they invest of pure ease and they're investing in Burlington because the the properties, the value. Is that a thing? Are there people buying that buying single homes in Burlington right now for investments? I think so. I think it's a lot of 
like people that have money to park. I get, right? I get it like, when you're like developing. Um, it's not an appreciation play right, no, right now. I think it's a park yeah. money play, and I'm sure park there's a lot of sure. laundering going on, especially with <laughs> the, <laughs> with uh, the government shutting down foreign investment and stuff. And I think there's a reason probably for that because there's a wee bit of that going on for the past ten years. Uh, yeah. and I know Oakville, some of the highest uh, developments in North Oakville, like my my good friend. Uh, high school works for the region and he says like some of the big and he's in real estate his father was a big commercial real estate guy in burlington he says like there's neighborhoods because he shuts he's in the water department because there's like full-blown six bedroom five bedroom homes neighborhoods that are owned by chinese uh, investors and no one lives in these streets like yeah. there's one hockey net and there's one kid playing hockey on a whole street of 30 homes and they're empty or there will be one person living in it for free strictly just because they just want someone to make sure it doesn't flood they don't even That's want wild. money. It's the, so they're from what I understand parking money. So That's I've heard funny. that from the outside. I've kind of witnessed it myself. You're kind of looking at the government uh, doing certain things, and that must be going on. Mm -hmm. that that's wild. I've heard that. I mean, that's obviously why they're doing the foreign buyers tax. Yeah. Is yeah. that is that national? That, that, I think, yeah, I think it just came into play. I don't know if it's national or Ontario. I'm not too sure. I think it's, no, yeah. it's national. It's national. national. So yeah. all, of, all of Canada, well, do you know, I, I haven't even looked into this. There's still ways around it. From yeah. I, I remember reading it. I'm like, you yeah. could just get your son to come here and to go to college and put. And then like, I know yeah. Toronto's doing like a vacancy uh, tax, I believe. Yes, they've just implemented yeah. that as well. Yeah. So I think there is still ways around it because I did read yeah. the initial article and I think if you sent your kid here from school, they could still. So, yeah, obviously <laughs> it's and a lot of people get really worked up about these changes. And I would say um, my, you know, word of the wise is don't get worked up with the hype around this stuff. Like, for one, if you look into the actual literature, a lot of the times you'll find that this was already in effect. It just yeah. now it was just formalized. So, um, oh. yeah, avoid the uh, the fear porn, so to speak. It's yeah. just not uh, in an investor world. It doesn't help us like we got. to. There's always a way. Yep, that's no the doubt. mindset to have. Well, there's a way. Yeah, well, there's a way. And it's uh, it's more of a how. How do I do this? How yep. do I adjust now? So how many do you have in Burlington now? Is it just the Brant stuff or do you have? So I've got three on Brant. We managed three for TJ, two townhouses on Leland and one on Prospect. Okay. And uh, I have my uh, like rental home. It's it's on Cedarwood, just off Plains Road, Aldershot area, uh, like King Road. That's Plains something Road. you own and rent out? Yeah, with TJ. We both own it. We've owned okay. it for a few years. Uh, that's a development play long term. It's got like Cedar Springs, is it? Uh, no, C Cedarwood. Cedarwood. Cedarwood Place. So uh, it's just off Plains Road, Kings King Road and, and Plains Road. Oh, okay. McDonald's there. Plains. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, so yeah, really gentrifying neighborhood. You know, the yeah. uh, I'm, sh I'm not too sure if you know the Aldershot master plan, everything on Plains Road is getting torn down mid-rise with commercial on the Interesting. main floor. Well, I've kind of witnessed it. I've never seen it, but I, I actually briefly lived in apartments down there on, on Plains Road. Okay. Sorry for the people who don't know Burlington. We're just, okay. we're geeking out on it, but we'll, yeah. it, it's all relevant, I swear. Number one city in Canada, there's reason for it. Is it? Yeah. I, well, it was, so I just yeah, keep it's been it. it's been <laughs> it's been rated like one of the top places to live in like Number one mid-size city rated yeah. in Canada. I think it's got it back to back a few years. It's, it's nice. It's got the... Uh, like we live up on the escarpment now, which is like really awesome. Beautiful home, by the way. Yeah, we're we're super um, fortunate and really really happy with it. So it, yeah, it's a beautiful beautiful spot to live because you can be you can be close to the you know the city, but also you know still have some uh, some peaceful escape. I have to ask you, how'd you come across that? Ah, uh, it's a story for another day. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Like a, yeah, I think you said number like. One of the side roads, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's out there. Yeah, yeah. one of the, I can't, can't remember where he said, but yeah, we won't give that information on the podcast here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the, the, anything, that's so, where I draw the line. <laughs> anything north of Highway Five, once you kind of yeah. get into rural Burlington, all the way from yeah. north of Highway Five to Milton, which is Dairy Road, essentially, right? Yeah, uh, anything in between there, which you're you're up yeah. there somewhere. Um, you're you're it's not easy land to come on by, and I know yeah. Madame Peter Gilligan bought a large chunk of anything from Tremaine. Yeah, so, there's a lot of like that's I think that's considered green belt and uh, apparently that's, that's right. going to be changed now. Now there's development going to happen in the green belt. I have no idea what that means for the future. We'll see. But uh, I'm not too, too worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you'll get a hundred year lease anyways. Even if, yeah. Something if, like they, that. If, they ever, if they ever came knocking on your door, they, I think they hand out like 50 year leases. It's all like master plan. Massive communities are trying to build. Right. They're not interesting. Huh. From, from what I understand, that's what. Uh, so I believe like Highway 5 all the way up to Maine, like Gilligan owns everything from Adamy still, right? And they're all on, like a lot of those farms yeah. are on 100 year leases. He owns everything. So he owns it every, waiting to develop it. He's working he owns, his way through. He owns everything. Yeah. Uh, so I think he just built up Milt. And, oh, huh. I'll cool it for 20 years and let my kids develop that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's his plan. I wonder if he'd come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, he's a pretty, pretty big name. I uh, I just asked my my assistant, uh, because I, I, I watched, um, 
a YouTube channel that had Peter Schiff on. And it wasn't like a huge channel. I'm like, I want to get Peter Schiff on this show. I wonder if he'd come on. So I asked her to try and find out uh, how they book because that would just be like, probably for me, one of the top guests I'd want to get. I, I'm just in this moment. I thought of that today. I'm like, we might as well try, you know, mm-hmm. like. I have no doubt you'd be able to land them. No doubt. Yeah, no just doubt. just start putting it out there because you, you don't get if you don't put it out there. You, you have so, to try, you have to so try. Peter, if you're not listening and if you are listening, either way, come on the show. For yeah. sure. Um, but anyways, okay, so Burlington, um, what do you target? Like if, if you're here in Burlington, like obviously TJ knows what he's got. It's, you know, some of these places are, are worth a fair bit. I don't know. What would you say those properties that you're renting are worth? Like six, seven hundred, eight hundred? Oh, I don't even know. I, I, townhouse, one townhouse in Burlington. What's that going to be? So well, it's wrong? come down, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably like, six, seven, right? So, yeah. um, and uh, the fourplex. I, I don't know what a what a two bedroom condo would cost you in Burlington downtown now. But if you were purchasing, I don't know. It but would be a lot. It's, it's, it would it's be not, like five hundred plus. Yeah. So let's let's just assume like that. Like we'll talk about the townhouse. Like what what are you targeting as as a as a profit level or, or are you just offering market? No, I'm rent? just managing. I'm managing those. Oh, forms. you're just managing. Yeah. So those are, that's where we've delved into management. Okay, that's what so. we're really trying to concentrate on until we get the right people mm-hmm. that fit our mold that yeah. we don't have to force things on them because yeah. you need that. You need to try to get that one, two months rent leeway at the beginning for your setup. Yeah. You, you, you need to try to bar bargain out of the deposit. So if you're, you know, if because I'm managing, credible, I don't need to give you a deposit. You right, know, right. Well, I'm, and you guys, are, you guys go back. Yeah. But um, so in that scenario, you have no investment because TJ no, furnishes it. No. So then, I know a lot of guys talk about twenty five percent for Airbnb management. Is that what you guys are targeting? We, we got a little special rate for him, but that's yeah. Our obviously, you guys go back and you can do yeah. things a little differently. Yeah, yeah. And like he could supply me so much value. Uh, yeah, and he has supplied me so much value. Mm-hmm. Uh, just mindset alone, being here. Yeah. I wouldn't be in real estate a big part of it if it weren't for yeah. him he exposed me to a lot of it mind you it's up to you to keep keep turning yeah. right anyone can get exposed to it yeah uh, you got to make something of it but mm. uh we we provide value back and forth and that'll interesting. never end interesting interesting um so what would you normally like say you pick 25 percent like 25 percent yeah what if you're arbitraging it what are you looking for like are you just saying it's got to be market rent like whatever market rent is a, a tad bit under i'm bringing you way too much value i'm, I'm okay so what's that place worth market rent I would, I think I offer, I initially offered him market rent and he goes, you know what, Cammy, do you mind if I make a bit of money? He's, <laughs> I can actually picture him saying that. Yeah. He goes, I said, <laughs> no, not at all. He goes like, would you set it up for me? And here's, I, I let me call my lawyer. I'll make up a management contract and uh, obviously charge him a fee. My wife's the design manager. So she's designed mm-hmm. it all. Not that we're ba- ba- like base level, right? So it's nothing crazy design mm-hmm. wise, uh, but she's got all the, you know, the, the fronts for the stores and whatnot and where she wants to get her furniture yeah. from a discount. So we just charge him a fee to set it all up, have it turnkey yeah. ready. And we're, uh, we're actually on the, just on the mend right now on uh, getting another me- uh, entity going, which is going to be kind of B and B specific, which will kind of uh, cover those, cover those spaces. So we set it all up for him, bought his furniture, you know, he reimbursed us, got yeah. it all going for him. So you just him. handle the whole thing and yeah, then you and take we just a make fee. a monthly fee. So we're looking at is why are we chasing landlords, wasting our time, wasting our energy, um, kind of taking a, sh- a hit to your confidence sometimes too when you're not, when you're not landing deals right you're trying yeah. these things with landlords i don't i lost a, a good jv with a very very strong partner they just couldn't see it i could not could not explain it to them so who are you going to chase if you're not chasing landlords well i'm waiting for them to come to me now oh, and saying. we're looking to pursue more or less property management people that want to make money themselves yeah. well if we can scale up a property management it costs us nothing we're still yeah. building our systems we're still keeping our guys busy we're, you know, we're giving our guys more work. You're taking a very Spencer and Ashley approach to it. I think like they do both, right? Yes, like they'll yes. do management. They'll do, uh, yeah. they'll do, do joint event or what do you call it? Arbitrage. Yeah. But I was dead set on not doing management at the beginning. It's funny oh. how you, you learn. Oh, I do that. that. 25% I do it. Yeah. No, you learn it. And uh, there's a lot to it, right? It's yeah. it's small, but if you truly take pride in properties and you want to take well, care and of And you're building a business out of it, yeah. then then it makes sense. It's There's a lot of work involved. If you're you don't do it do, as a one-off. No. Because then it's not even worth it at 25%. No, 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 no not at all. So we're, 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 we're going and we're just trying to focus on if we can build up property management wait for the right people yeah. the right fits yeah. you know, we don't want to regret something after a year and move like that's not something you want to do no. or, or well find... every new city you have to you have to coordinate moving trucks take your furniture from storage lockers down huge, here huge waste of time or you buy the furniture down here where do you store it in the meantime as you assemble it all personally i have my like garage. i have a whole shop in my garage racking systems staging areas okay like, so you got enough signs, space in your house yeah like signs like 
property one if you have two one bedrooms going at the same time you can't fit two three bedrooms in my garage but yeah I got a truck in there too so you got wants... all that then you're loading it into a moving truck you're yep. either doing it yourself or paying somebody to go up plus you have to set it up so you guys are probably both involved so you're... i'm actually not involved in the setup at all we've just launched which is like hard for me to even believe andrew that's how far you push my mindset we've just launched four five six units the last six units i have not stepped foot on i've been so you have people you've hired yeah so yeah people my, you had mentioned yeah my launch and he's a really credible guy he's a hvac mechanic he's a yeah. licensed elevator mechanic so yeah. he's like way too overqualified and he's a car guy which jay really aligns with jay's a car guy so he's really anal about how detailed his cars are and stuff so yeah. i knew that about him growing up i bought my camaro off his dad so okay. i knew how anal he was with with hot, like cleanliness mm -hmm. and keeping things nice and i think you've heard this before when you hire someone like Try to meet them at the parking lot. Have a tickety boo with their car, right? Yeah. Uh, how you keep your cars? How you gonna keep your, oh, keep yeah, your space? Yeah. And he's a very clean guy. So yeah, he's he's over kind of skilled for what he's doing, but he's enjoying it. He's enjoying the freedom, and he's enjoying not having to be bossed around and uh, not being told what to do with his bodily autonomy. <laughs> So it's it's kind of nice being able to put trust in people like that. Uh, we sent him out to a good friend of mine who moved down to Florida, uh, and he came back here and he's applying for the whole green card space. Same same page as all of us and he goes would you manage my basement if i yeah i said yeah, i'll set it all up for you and all that and like yeah. taylor went in there and he's like dude this guy's water heater is about to blow yeah. like, this guy's got to order new water heater and, and he's yeah. like so like he's we're truly providing value to people like he, mm -hmm. he's he's spotting as oh that's that's handy that's a good guy it, to have and he was out of the country i'm sure he would have so, known it was ready to go like if he was home but he's not home so how do you structure it? Because it's obviously very stressful to take on full-time salaries. Are you bringing these people on as employees? Are they subcontractors? The sub subbed out right now. Yeah. We're kind of, uh, we've got some stuff bubbling for the B&B space coming mm -hmm. up. You'll see uh, shortly another entity going to be launching shortly. Um, can't give too much away on that. Uh, mm -hmm. That'll kind of change the structure and, and make things more seriously for him. And, okay. and uh, you know, you know, we're, we're making sure it works first. Uh, but it's it's working. Six units got launched. Uh, yeah. I'm not there. They're turning. We're getting good reviews. So uh, we, we have faith That's in each awesome. other and we're just going to keep moving like that. But So you're Midlothian Suites on Airbnb? Yeah, Midlothian Suites. Yeah. Okay. And are you doing direct bookings yet? Like, do you have we're, a we're trying to. We're trying to. Um, think about direct bookings. You got to have a really good website platform. Really good website platform. And if you speak to Spencer and Ashley, which we, we have no problem um, paying for mentorship. Uh, like I said, I was with Ben Mirasan for a year did my mindset levels levels never met him just just being around the space mm -hmm. and thinking like way big like go oh, i think way too small just think like way bigger um when you uh sorry where was i going with this what was the question i've completely completely uh, lost track well, you, were, you were saying that you were, you were willing to spend on mentorship with spencer and ashley so we actually spoke to spencer ashley personally okay and we had spoke about direct bookings and there is a license in ontario socialist ontario you need a license to take direct bookings off of multiple platforms so if we're going to mm -hmm. two years of operating experience i believe they said it's i can't remember what the terminology or the abbreviation for this yeah certain and this organization. is like the tourism this is the tourism one you, i you need a, a tico or tico something? correct yeah. andrew that's abbreviation um you need a uh travels agent's license to direct book through two different websites so i think we can direct book from airbnb but you can't like be on vrbo and airbnb That's and then like do you want to be advertising on the sign on brand and like get in trouble for that so huh. we're, we're we get our two years under our belt we're looking at that but we're also looking bigger why are we doing looking to invest all this in yeah. an environment that doesn't suit us that is going to limit so our growth. thinking outside the country then? yeah yeah we're, we're hoping to get down to the states eventually not that things are any better there right now with yeah. <laughs> with the uh, current climate but there's a few states that um i think the mindsets of the people oh dude it's way way better you know <laughs> i was just having a conversation uh you should come to our mastermind by the way i, I saw that last night yeah, i will yeah. be there okay so um i was just having a conversation with a guy who's been on this podcast before and absolutely crushes he's going to come back on but um he's uh he's got funds going in canada and in the u.s and he he owns hundreds and hundreds of doors like individual houses in canada and uh, he's slowly liquidating that portfolio because he says that in canada the way things are going um eventually they're going to need narrative when people can't afford homes and who are they going to blame they're going to blame the investors, investors yes. so they're going to create a lot of hostility towards investors he's like in the u.s like it's just a lot harder to pull that off and, and and the communities work a little bit better for that. So he feels a lot more comfortable owning um, 
owning single family homes down there. Yeah. Because, you know, mentality, like, and, and I'm sure a lot of the, the audience of this show will get it. Like you've had tenants that they just walk all over you at the end. Yeah. Like they run up an $800 bill and don't pay it and say, yeah. hey, there you, it's I yours. Like, I know. It's insane. It's yeah. insane. So that's why, once again, I like the model because you yeah. have to be able to, I don't know a ton about business, but if you're not providing people value, you're going to be dead. Like, and, and yeah. if, you, if you don't think Airbnb arbitrage is providing landlords value when you have been a property manager, you've owned properties before, you've mm -hmm. seen what can happen. Uh, anyone with half a brain that the model suits them would 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 run with this yeah. if it suits them if it's what they're looking for right it's a business like yeah. it's not a it's not a passive investment uh, I believe that any business once set up correctly can be more passive that's your that's what your team does yep. but you still need to be overseeing the machine like Either. you build the machine and then you watch it it's like an engine that's running you might have to give it some oil you yep. know well, tighten you, the belts I think you either buy a passive business. Yeah. Or you build a passive business. Yeah. And when you're building a passive business, it's not passive. You have to build it. And yeah. that's what we're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's not passive at all uh, whatsoever. Uh, I had to run out the other day, fix something quick. I could have, like, delegated, but it was, like, such a premium. And yeah. it's like, you know what? I got to run out and grab if diapers anyways. you get those anyways. people, though, like, I've got people, like, a guy in London, and one of them had to move away, but um, he will do, like, he knows I pay him fast. Yeah. He, yeah. he knows, like, if I ask him to do something... It's a, it's the real deal. I don't ask him his price. He just sends me the bill. It's always good. Like he shows up for me every time you get people like that in your organization, uh, that will just always go. They'll take care of anything you need. You can, you know, you can really rest a lot easier. Yeah. I think respect goes a long way when yeah. you're speaking to people like that, yeah. uh, paying promptly, being punctual. Yeah, yeah. Well, they know you're a professional. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, they, they deal with a lot of people who are, you know, they have to chase for payments and stuff, or, you know, they give them weird jobs. They're never sure what they're getting into. If you've, you know, if I've worked with this guy for like five plus years. So like we know what we're getting into yep. when we work yep. together, right? It's uh, that kind of relationship. I really value those. I think that's a little bit harder to get going when you're starting off, like yeah. just remotely getting these people, remotely getting these yeah. systems. You grow with it. Um, at the beginning, I'm like sending people deposits. I've never met them now, but I'm seeing a lot now where I just got a few tricks. Hey, give me some verbal, like yeah. from your cell phone and on an email. I've accepted a deposit. Oh, yeah, for this. yeah. Just get it in you writing, know, get it in a text. Yeah. If you're not comfortable doing that, well, you ain't ever going to grow. And yeah. that's how I've seen like myself grow a lot where I would be like, there's no way. Like, okay, I'll just stick to Burlington, but there's pastures greener. Yeah. There's okay. Pastures so, greener. So in the immediate future, being that you're, um, you're sort of set up for Ontario, Obviously, like yeah. what regions if somebody calls you and says will you take on my rental in cornwall are you going to say yes to that no 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 uh, not cornwall no so we're right now we're in barry kitchener hamilton and burlington okay. we've just expanded to barry we're gonna have four units there this year um, Dude, that's a, that's far like, uh, what's that hour and a half two hours yeah i don't know i haven't been there yeah that's, that's good <laughs> it's like, i don't know no i think it is just been driving by up the 400 and like that landlord called me uh and just touched base with me i don't know if it was through you or whatnot but he, I don't mm. think he liked what was going on in the country. Him and his wife went down to Texas. Extremely mm. positive guy, awesome guy to work with, pleasure to work with. And it's just awesome knowing that he's in Texas. He doesn't have to worry about anything. I took, I, I sent him a deposit, I sent him a deposit in the first and the last before I even saw the place. It was newly renovated. Yeah. Uh, but I trust him because he's a professional. So, so that's I'm the like, part where you guys got to stay liquid for that to, to front all these deposits, yep. all the furniture. I mean, you're into like 20 grand to get these these rolling. Maybe not it, that much, right? Just, just depends on how many bedrooms, right? Uh, so if, if it's like a three bedroom house, would you rent that? Is that something you would work with? So that's actually funny you're saying that. Like our worst performing properties right now are larger homes. I think you're seeing that across the board. Oh, you're yeah, seeing a you lot mentioned of, that. Yeah, the seeing small a lot ones of, do well. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of people mention that. So we're like literally nailing down our systems. We're like one bed. You like one beds. One plus ten. Especially with what you guys are doing, the hotel model. Yeah. I think that works really well. Yeah. So we're really trying to just, and you learn, right? And that's what's incredible. We're a year into it and we're learning what works and what doesn't work. One thing I can say is uh, we, we're only going to go to markets where we can get multiple units, where we can see us just, just keep yeah. growing. Yeah. You're not going to go anywhere for one. Yeah. That wouldn't make sense. No, no. So uh, even if it is a management contract in Muskoka and it's turning out thousands during the summer, it's just going to be a distraction. That's all it's going to be. I so think, I think Muskoka could be huge. Did you watch the Ben Julius episode? Oh yes, it's huge. It's massive. Yeah. But I think, I think there's a few entities up there working oh, already. Oh, you got some competition. Yeah, some very big entities. So yeah. we're looking at like where can yeah. we actually massively scale with the systems we have yeah. and the model we're using. That's not our model. Yeah. So we're just getting distracted. It's a so, it's a shiny object to us now where we were soul set on that, like just getting up cottage country management. 
it doesn't fit your model. Like Difference. if you guys are a hotel model, yeah. Muskoka is a vacation management. Rentals. We would do that. You want to have us manage a property for you? It's already fully furnished. Okay, you, yeah. That's a little bit different. Oh, you're already up there. So if you're we're, we're managing something for you, you're yeah. gonna have some you're gonna have some contacts. Yeah. So up you there. got to build out your team, but you'll take you take I'll some take of theirs. Your, it's yeah. a, it's we don't want to waste our time. Yeah. Uh, and to just get pulled away from uh something that's doing. actually gonna structure us. Like doing one unit in Muskoka is not gonna help us go down. Florida, yeah Texas. no no no. If, if 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 you're gonna go there you gotta you gotta plan to grow there yeah yeah um, municipalities wise like do you like are the laws in in burlington or hamilton or are you just ignoring them like are they favorable not not favorable like i know like toronto you're allowed to rent out your own place for 180 days a year or whatever it yeah. is i so think don't toronto i wouldn't mess with because i, I everyone's just trying to get out of well that. i think it's safe to say if i i i'm fair and i'm fair to this point of view if i owned a three million dollar yeah. condo yeah and someone was Airbnb in their place beside me. I'd be making a stink too. I paid yeah. three mil for this place, man. I'm a Toronto yeah. executive. Yeah. I don't want to live beside some stranger. Like, even if you don't mind, there's egos with that. When you yeah. pay huge money, yeah, you you want some control. You want an opinion. Sure. To me, that's that's Toronto tenfold. Okay. Uh, all the way to Oakville, in my opinion. Like, yeah, it would yeah. stop at Oakville, and I think Burlington's that happy medium of working class people with yeah. money that yeah. accept that everyone's got to make a living, and and everyone kind of. Keeps yeah. to their own a little bit in Burlington. It's kind of got like a little bit of Hamilton mix to it in Burlington, I find. Well, I see I see the, the Airbnbs working here. Like, I'm not familiar with what the laws of, of Burlington are. For... They have no laws. Um, yeah. I'll give you give you an example. I saw one of our competitors, not competitors, uh, like I guess other people in the industry, they had mentioned that, oh, like the, the meeting's been delayed in Hamilton. Because uh, they're going to do it there too, right? I was like, I, And someone sent me the post, actually. I'm like, shows you how different my mind... I'm like, I'm going to... I'm going to blow these people out of the water because I'm like, it shows you how different my mind is. Like, you have to care, but I'm not letting that stop. You're not going to let it stop. You can go to another municipality. Like, yeah, if like, that comes into effect, first off, they're going to make the decision and it's going to come into effect later. So you'll have some notice to get out. Yeah. And write your leases smart. Give yourself an out. But if you can make money in the meantime and then shift out to another municipality, keep doing that. I have no problem telling the landlord if something drops in the city and I have to leave, I'm going to have to leave. I can't operate here anymore. I'm not paying you the rest of your one year. They should lease. get that. They yeah. under, you're yeah. going to leave professionally, and I yeah, you, we'll clean up. I've we'll, got your paint codes. We'll be touching up when you leave. The fact I'm asking for your paint codes, they're already like, yeah. whoa, this is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like paint codes. What are you talking about? Would you like us to do your fire inspection this year and change your furnace filters out for you too? Yeah. Just let, we got your size document. Yeah, so you're telling that, this, yeah. but if something drops, we're going to be paid up to the date. But yeah. we're gonna have to leave. But your places, there's you're not even have to. Have, we have a cleaning team. It's yeah. deep cleaned. Like it's ready for turnover. You you don't get that anywhere else. So we right. no. We're working with landlords. I can see how you could sell this that are and, that are okay yeah. with that. And if you're not okay with that, like your property's great. You know what? We we could turn a dollar here. But yeah. I'm not in control. They could yeah. bring something to play, and I don't want to dis disappoint you or or uh, tarnish my reputation. Yeah. Which is everything to us, Andrew. Like no, reputation that's great. Yeah. is everything. Yeah, it's absolutely what matters, especially what you're doing. Word travels. You got to do good business. Yep. Yep. So you know you, you got to make profit. People with the houses got to get something that works for them. And uh, I like the arbitrage thing. It's a it's a nice win win. Everybody it's, everybody wins. The the tenant, the middleman, the the landowner. That's that's what something that really intrigued me. The more we do this, it's just providing value to everyone. Like yeah. it, it's just like, and it sounds corny. It's yeah. got to be win win. Like it oh has yeah, to be. I made the determination a long time ago. I would only, I would only do business and win, win, win. Like yeah. you know, everyone involved's got to win. Yeah. And I, and I'll gravitate towards where people are winning the most. Yeah. And and it just, it just makes it more fun. You don't want to do business for somebody that, that's that's losing on the deal or feels bitter about. I, it. I don't know how you could uh, never. Not only no, sleep at night, but just yeah. just find it joyful, scalable. It wouldn't, how it is it scalable? No, yeah, it no, just it wouldn't don't. be enjoyable. That's why I never understood like meter maids and stuff. Like <laughs> what you're doing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you got a very unhappy customer on a daily basis. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, anywho. Cam, uh, where do people find you if they want to uh, request your services or just follow you? You can uh, you can reach out at info at Midlothian Suites. We have a 24-7 hour call line as well. Um, you can call us any day, anytime. Leave us a message. Uh, if you want to use the keyword Heinz, we'll put that in the show notes. If you email us, reach out to uh, at Midlothian Suites, M-I-D-L-O-T-H-I-N Suites, S-U-I-T-E-S. -E uh, direct messages there. Or you can call our, our phone line. Uh, it's twenty four seven. Like I said, call center, email, whatever. Just put the keyword Heinz. Just everywhere. We know. We know where you got. We you found us from at least, yeah. and we can uh, we can provide you obviously some special treatment. 
uh, okay. when the time comes. And if people just want to kind of follow the journey, you know, see what you're up to. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Cam C A M Griffith eighty eight uh, G R I F F I T H. So C A M G R I F F I T H eight eight. And uh, I'll also put my business yeah, partners. We'll get uh, that in there. Yeah, I'll put my business partners Instagram tags because they're just Jay. such a massive piece of what we do. Yeah. And my wife as well, design manager. Yeah. Okay. Uh, stager and she takes care of uh, yeah we'll, we'll get a couple of links in there uh, i think you have an insta page for your business too that'd probably be a good yeah. good one to yeah. throw in there yeah. yeah we'll uh we'll do that um okay yeah i appreciate you coming over sharing the story um i know we dove pretty deep on a lot of this stuff but i think like we gave a lot of insight on how this type of a business is actually run yeah because it really is a business but it's so relevant to real estate investors right now yeah. i find well thank uh, you very much for having me on andrew it's uh just absolute pleasure to be here yeah, it's been great. All right. Thanks, Cam. Until next time. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Please make sure to share this episode far and wide. Help it help more people. I really appreciate you tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. There are a lot of people out there talking about the infinite banking strategy and whether or not it makes sense for them. To find out what it's all about and if it's a fit for you, visit controlandcompound.com forward slash Andrew Hines, where my audience can gain exclusive access to books, podcasts, and webinars tailor-made for real estate investors. Are you interested in getting started in investing in the United States but not sure where to start? Why not attend the Investing in the U.S. Mastermind hosted by myself and Nick Van Dyke on March 4th, 2023. Nick and I will be covering topics ranging from A to Z, new construction, multifamily development, Airbnb, and much, much more, as well as the basics, including opening a bank account and understanding the proper corporate structure. We'll have several keynote speakers touching on very specific topics. And most importantly, you'll be sitting in a room with people who are highly focused and highly committed to investing in the United States. For more information, visit investinginthus.com and send me a DM on Instagram for a special discount code. I'll look forward to seeing you at the event.